In this video, I will talk about the different data types and how much memory they will use. I will also talk about unsigned data types and about integer overflows. Right here, what you see is the first eight bytes of the SRAM inside of our Arduino. And this is the place where variables are stored. Every byte consists of eight bit. It starts with the address 0, 1, 0, 0 in hexadecimal. But don't worry about it too much. For now, it doesn't really matter. It's just a number. The address range of the SRAM is 0, 1, 0, 0 to 0, 8, FF in hexadecimal. This translates into 2048 byte. This is the total amount of SRAM available in the Arduino. So if you now create a variable, for example, a byte variable called a equals five, inside of the SRAM, one of these cells will be reserved for your variable. And the variable will then be stored inside of this allocated space inside of the RAM. Computers only work with zeros and ones. And so you might be confused as to how this Arduino now stores the number five by using zeros and ones. Using eight bits, you can store the number five like this. Every digit represents a different power of two. It starts with two to the power of zero, which is one, two to the power of one, which is two, two to the power of two, which is four, and so on. And then you have to add up these numbers so it is 4 plus 1 equals 5. This gives you a total range of 0 to 255 using exactly one byte. But what happens if you have a byte variable with the value 255 and then you try to increment it by 1? You take this number and add 1 and then we print it. So we have a byte variable with the value 255, then we add 1 and then we print it. Now what happens is we get an overflow because if we add one more to this number, now the result would be two to the power of eight, which is 256, but there are only eight bits. The result in this case is just zero. So it jumps from 255 down to zero if you add one. Now, if you're not used to this mechanism, this might be confusing. If we are at the maximum, and then we add one more, we jump back to zero. That's how it works. Now what happens if we have zero and then we subtract one? We decrement zero by one. The result would be minus one, but byte is not able to store negative numbers. And so the result is we jump back to 255, which is the maximum. So if you're at the minimum and then you try to get below the minimum, you jump to the maximum. But sometimes you want to store negative numbers and that's where the integer variable comes in. And the integer variable actually requires two bytes. And using this bigger space, you can store bigger numbers. An integer number can store negative numbers and positive numbers. But if you want to store slightly bigger numbers and don't care about negative numbers, then you can also use what's called unsigned integer. Unsigned integer frees up some space for positive numbers. Now, if you have an overflow with an integer variable, this is actually undefined and you can't be sure what the outcome is because there are different ways how to save negative numbers in memory. Whereas if you use unsigned integer, it is always defined that you jump from the highest possibility to the lowest and from the lowest to the highest likewise. But let's say you would like to store even bigger numbers. Then there is a variable called long. Long requires four bytes in memory and this allows you to store very big numbers. So you can store numbers between negative two billion up to positive two billion. And if you don't care about the negative numbers, again, you can use unsigned long and then you get even more on the higher end. You get more than four billion. But sometimes this is still not enough. Let's say you want to store the US national debt inside of an Arduino. Um, in this case, you would need a long long. 
Um, uh, long long uses 8 bits to store the number. And now you can store really big numbers. So this ranges from negative 9 quintillion to positive 9 quintillion. And if this is not enough for you, or you want to have a defined behavior in the case of an overflow, you would use unsigned long long. And this gives you a range of 0 to 18 quintillion, which is a big number and actually big enough to store the US national debt for now. But remember, if you use the unsigned long long, we have a defined behavior in the case of an overflow. But if you use the long long, which allows negative values, there is no defined behavior in case of an overflow just like with the national debt. So let me show you how this looks in code. I will create a byte variable called a equals zero. And then we decrement this number. I will print this number. So what do we expect? A equals zero minus one, but byte is an unsigned variable. It only allows positive numbers. What do you think is the outcome? And the result is 255. You might be confused as to why there is no unsigned, right? Because it's an unsigned variable. Well, actually, byte is an unsigned character variable, but we can just use byte. Let's try it into the other direction. We have a equals 255 plus plus zero because we are already at the maximum. We try to get above the maximum. That's why we go straight to the minimum. One thing that is also interesting is you can Check how much memory something uses by using size of. So if I print size of a, we don't need to increment it. It will return the number one because it uses one byte. If I use unsigned long, how many bytes does it use up? unsigned long uses four bytes to store the number. Now what's the result for integer? Two. And the last one was long long. Long long or unsigned long long use up the same space which is eight. Now one thing that we can also take a look at is float. So a floating point number float actually uses four bytes and the interesting thing is double which also stores floating point variables on on my arduino it is also stored inside of four bytes so double is the same as float so if this video was helpful please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of arduino thank you for watching see you in the next lesson